the Bible says, I think it was David says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And we want to welcome you all here today, and especially you on the internet that's watching. We hope and we pray that you are going to be touched and blessed by, by the service this morning. If you all would, let's stand. We're going to have prayer. We're going to pray for the service. We believe that God's going to move in a mighty way today. Amen. 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 Father God, we thank you today. Father God, we just come to your house, Father God, in your presence, God. And we thank you. We praise you that, that your spirit is prevalent in this place, Father God. We thank you for touching the hearts and the minds of the people here today and on the Internet, Father God. We pray, Father God, that you have your way in the service, Father God. If there's anyone here, Father God, that needs you, Father, let them find you today, Father God. I pray, Father God, that people will not leave like they came in Jesus' name, Father God. If, and we pray for those who are sick in their bodies. We pray, Father God, that you will heal them and uh, just... Um, Make them whole right now in Jesus' name. God, we pray for those who need a deliverance, Father God, that you set them free. God, we thank you. We praise you, Father God, for having your way today, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Let's praise him today. He's worthy. Amen. Hallelujah.
Okay, now then. <laughs> and the ones on the internet, if you can read lips while I go, that's wonderful. <laughs>
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. sight and I believe in yours excuse the tears this morning I've tried to hold it back but it's normal and it's healthy mm -hmm. and so if y'all will forgive me you know I'm just sorry <laughs> um, we received uh, we received some some money for the church that came in the mail 
and uh, w and and actually Dove Broad Gas Bro <laughs> Dove Broadcasting sent us a check for a hundred dollars for the ministry, and it, it came today and it really touched my heart because usually you're, we're giving or or they're receiving, and this time they're giving, and I just thank the Lord for that. And they said they do that normally instead of send flowers or something. I have a message for Wednesday night, but right now, if you'll bear with me, I will have some different ones preach for a little bit until I can get all my personal things taken care of. There's a lot to take care of that I did not know was even, you know, had to be done. I've tried to hold up, and I have held up because of the grace of God, but I know that you love me. And I love you so much. And I know that you understand that sometimes the tears will come. And I don't know when they're coming. You understand? <laughs> you have some more of that tissue. But you're all so precious to me. And your loving thoughts, your calls, your prayers, your... You've, you've surrounded me with love. You've surrounded me with flowers and cards, and and you've surrounded me with food. I mean, you really surrounded me with food. <laughs> I think some of you that have had a death in the family, you kind of know what I'm talking about. But our church, our church stands with each other. We're all one in the Lord, and God has put us together for a, a certain purpose. And, and there's a reason that, that Roy's not with us now. And I just need to read this letter. This is a letter he wrote in uh, August the 22nd, 2000. It's concerning the continuation of this ministry. So if you'll bear with me, I believe it'll bless you as it did me when I found it when I was going through all these papers. And I knew this letter was there somewhere, but I didn't really know where, and I didn't know when, when I'd find it, but I did find it, and I said, I've got to read this in congregation because it's to you. It says, To whom I, it may concern, I, Roy P. E. Porter, founder of Liberty Ministries Church, by the divine purpose and will of God, have instructions for the continuation of said ministry. In the event of my death, I, I, by prayer and much meditation, give these instructions. My wife, Jeanette H. Porter, co-founder of this ministry and my co-pastor, will take over my position as pastor and director of this ministry with the same calling and commission from the Lord himself. Jeanette and I have always had the same vision, taking the love of God to the lost and hurting people. So God has called her and qualified her as a leader. May the Lord bless and strengthen her if this does ever even happen at my passing. If Jeanette and I passed on together, we both agree that Frederick R. Bagwell will take the pastorate of this ministry. Ricky Bagwell was with us at the beginning of this church. He was asked to be an associate pastor at the beginning of the church on Buncombe Street and has the same vision of prisons and foreign missions as has been and has been faithful to his calling. He is a mature, honest Christian of a good report, and a very capable as and is very capable as a leader to pastor, lead and love the people without partiality. Liberty Ministries is to continue to be a church under the Constitution and bylaws approved by the state of South Carolina and the internal revenue of the federal government of the United States of America. The, this organization is strictly nonprofit and legal by the standards of law, and no property can be sold for personal profit or gain. I've seen this happen a lot, and I'm glad that this is in there, and I knew it was, I knew it was in there, but I had forgotten about it. We have been privileged to work with many wise, dedicated people who love God. For the life of me, I don't know why God chose Jeanette and I to found and direct this ministry, and that has touched many people, that has touched many people that we may never meet down here. But every person that has been has helped us carry out the call of God in our lives are very special to us, and thank you from the bottom of our hearts to even care about this ministry continuing to touch people. And this is not the original document, this is a copy. But if any of you want to see it, you, you're welcome to do it.
and I want to take a minute here. We had a board meeting Thursday night at my house, and um, it was it was not your normal board meeting, but we had been praying about someone to step in the position of another board member. And um, we also, I, would, I think you'd like this, we also are planning to order new chairs. We're, we're going to be looking on the Internet and trying to find some, and we're going to order new chairs for this sanctuary. And uh, so you just bear with us, because I don't know how long it takes after you order them to get here. Sometimes they say three months. But just bear with us, and you're going to be comfortable as I am up there. Because this chair up here is comfortable. And I sit out there and watch y'all and I think, you know, those people are not as comfortable as I am sitting up here. So I asked the board, I said, let's, let's get some new chairs. And so that's, that's what we plan to do. Um, also, there's someone that's special to us and to everybody, I think, here because he's always tried to help. And uh, when we were building this building and Roy and I were building it, with our own arms and legs and hands and, and whatever, there was somebody that was with us all the time. Every time we were here, he was here. And, and I thought, when I was praying, I was thinking, you know, I was looking around thinking about different ones, and, and, and the Lord spoke to me that it, and gave me the name. Well, Ro Ricky came to me and he said, Jeanette, he said, I've been praying, I've been thinking about different ones, and said, the Lord has given me uh, a name. And it just so happened we both had the same name. So we had an, a vote, and we agreed that we would appoint uh, B.R. Slagle to be the new board member. Would you come up front just a minute, B.R.? <laughs> he, he is one like the one I read about what Roy said about uh, uh, Ricky Bagwell. And I believe that he'll make a great leader. Uh, we'll, we'll have another board meeting probably in, in January. And when we do, Brother B.R. will be there. Thank you, son, B.R. <laughs> and and uh, God bless you. And I, and I believe that y'all will really support him. And let's give him another hand in, in the support of him. Now... I would like to um, ask the ushers to come forward and receive God's tithes and his offerings. Brother Ronnie, would you pray, please?
Father, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Thank you for coming in our midst today, Holy Spirit. As we release ourselves to you to be ministers. I ask you that you meet every need, that no one would leave here without what they need from you today. I ask your blessings upon my people today, upon your people. Yes, spiritual, Lord. physical, financial blessings. Yes, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, that for their family members and their lost loved ones, yes. that you would save and heal and deliver, Lord. Yes, Lord. And I ask you, Father, if there's any sick here this morning, that you would just go through the congregation, sweep across them. Sweep across up here and heal, heal those who are sick or in men in pain. We give you praise and glory. And everybody say, Amen. 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 You can be seated now. Amen. Who's going to sing? Donna? Nathan. Nathan's got the special. Donna has the special, but she has, I think she asked Nathan to sing, sing this morning. So come on in. <clears throat>
He's worthy of our praise. Amen. Amen. You know, I just uh, praise God for that song. And Melissa was singing a song a while ago about how God, our Lord, uh, took all of those things on that cross for you and I. Praise God. But uh, he did it, and we have much to be thankful for. Amen. We have much to praise him for. Amen. We have so much to praise him for because all the things we've done, he took all of the things we've done and put it upon him. And praise God, we can be free because of him. Amen. We're going to look at it today. We're going to look at some things today. Uh, we're going to get in God's word and to see what he has today. The uh, Lord gave me this message, and uh, I know this is what he wants, so we're going to go forward. Amen. And i just say a, a, a real quick, uh, we're going to try to keep the, uh, the temperature around 70, 72, because that's what most people uh, are comfortable with, because you're going to have some folks out here that's real cold, <laughs> And you're going to have some folks that's going to be burning up. And I ask you all work with us, uh, and, and, and of course, and uh, uh, try to, if you have to, bring a sweater maybe, or if you have to, take a coat off something. But we'll try to keep it around 70, 72 degrees uh, uh, because it's really hard to uh, accommodate everybody. And we found that 70, 72 degrees is about the area most people are comfortable with. So bear with us on that, please. We love you, and we're just excited about what God's going to do. I know he's going to do... Uh, great and mighty things. Uh, my brother's in heaven, and he got big shoes, and I never try to uh, fill those shoes. I'm going to try to fill Ricky's shoes. Amen. And uh, though, so that's where they and I, and I asked, I'd like to ask the congregation and uh, uh, me and Sister Jeanette, if y'all would please keep us in prayer. Uh, just bring us before the Lord in a daily manner. Amen, because we need it. Uh, uh, the board of trustees and all of us, and we just ask that you keep us in prayer because we want to go forward and do what God wants us to do. Amen. And I'm excited. Uh, I was with Brother Charles last night. He preached in the prison last night. And uh, praise God, had a powerful message. God moved in a mighty way. And there was six souls saved uh, in the institution last night. We give God the praise for that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we're going to continue, Brother Michael, to go forward in the Lord. Amen. And uh, the work uh, and the vision that this church has uh, uh, to do what God has called us to do. Amen. We just want to see souls and people touched, healed, set free, and delivered. Amen. And we want to spread the gospel even all over the world. And we talking to the internet uh, uh, this morning. We pray that God will just touch you in a mighty way today as we get in God's word and see what he has for us. Amen. Uh, the Lord gave me the message. Uh, uh, he wants to talk about that true bread today. And I'm going to tell you right now, we all need that true bread. We're going to look at it uh, uh, today about the true bread and who is the true bread. Amen. And uh, we're not talking about that physical material bread, by the way. We're talking about uh, 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 our Lord Jesus Christ, and we're going to look at it and see uh, what the Word says. Uh, if you've got your Bibles, you want to follow with me. Let's look and see what the Lord has. Uh, I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to start off in Deuteronomy. Now I'm going to Luke, and then I'm going to wind up in old Gospel of John. Love the Gospel of John. But uh, I'm in uh, Deuteronomy 8, 3. If you want to turn there with me, I'm going to read a scripture uh, that uh, the Lord was humbling the people out in the wilderness. He was humbling them down. He was preparing them. Uh, to depend on him, amen? And we as Christians, we must learn to depend on him. And the first thing will have to, have to happen to us is when we become a, a child of the king, uh, uh, you already done it. When you humbled yourself and said, yes, Lord, I, I would like to have you as my Lord and Savior, amen? So we need to humble ourselves uh, before the Lord and go forward uh, uh, with him. I see Nathan got, he humbled thee and he suffered thee to hunger and fed them with manna which thou uh, knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee known the man doeth not live by bread only. That's a key scripture right there, you know. And Jesus quoted this same scripture when he was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, and he was tempted of the devil, and he told the devil that you don't live by bread only, but every word that comes out of uh, the word of God, amen, and it, uh, Jesus told the devil, it is written, it's word, there's life in this bread that we're talking about today. Now let's go a little bit further. I want to continue that. Uh, uh, the, he that might make thee known that man doeth not live by bread only, but by what every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doeth man live. 
So these words are life to our spiritual uh, uh, bodies and our walk with the Lord. These words are life. Uh, we must have these words in us uh, actually in a daily manner to go forth in the Lord. I'm going to tell you, if you're not studying and reading God's word every day, you better be aware because the enemy is going to come at you. And we are reading and studying God's uh, word every day. The enemy comes at us anyway. Amen. But greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world, praise God. So we do have the power through Jesus Christ to rebuke uh, uh, the enemy and his things that he throws at us. Amen. But I'm going to tell you from experience, you better stay in the word. And when you become a Christian, you have an obligation to get in God's word and to obey his commandments and follow him through his word. And when you get that word in you, oh man, it comes alive. It's real. It's life. It's, it's even moral uh, to the body. I'm going to tell you. Without the word, we just can't make it. Uh, uh, I'll get into a little bit later about eating. I can I can tell you some things about that. <laughs> Amen. But you know, I, I just uh, I was uh, in the institution in the prison last night, brother Charles. I noticed uh, last night, man, he started firing out some scriptures, and he fired out scriptures, and he kept on firing out scriptures. And there's power in the Word of God. That God has given us His Word. There's power in it. He just kept firing them scriptures out and, and giving those encouraging words. This is what God said. This is what uh, uh, our Lord said. And He kept firing them out. And at the end of that message, praise God, He just simply said, who wants these words? Who wants to be saved? Who wants uh, 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 Jesus in their heart? Uh, I want you to raise your hand. And praise God, we had a good uh, crowd last night. Six folks raised their hand to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's, that's just an awesome thing. That's the power of the Word. Amen. It's powerful. And uh, we as Christians, and uh, of course some of us uh, 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 older Christians, uh, uh, we know that you've got to stay in the Word. Younger Christians, you've got to get in that Word and you've got to do it every day because the enemy is going to come at you. Uh, I'll tell you right now, if you start going on a spiritual diet, you're going to have some problems. You need to keep that diet balanced. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You know, my wife gets on to me about certain things I eat and everything, you know. Uh, but I, I do eat because I want to keep this body healthy and going the way it ought to be. And she tells me, don't eat this. This is bad for you, you know. And uh, I, I try to look at some of these things so I can be healthy. And, 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 and But I do eat physical food. Well, I'll tell you right now, I eat my spiritual food every day too. Usually in the morning I get in uh, uh, my spiritual food and I eat uh, uh, the words of God and put them in my spirit, praise God, and it nourishes me spiritually where I'm strong. And, uh, you know, I always like to use this as an example when I go to the prisons and preach sometimes everything. I think, think it's a great one. Uh, some of you heard me say, you know, it's like if you had two horses, two big stallions, and you're going to have a tug of war, Okay. And uh, you, you, you feed uh, uh, maybe, uh, uh, I'm just going to say the white horse, and you feed it all month long, and you nourish it with food, material food, and it's strong and big. But the, let's say the brown horse, uh, you don't feed it, you don't tend to it much at all. The people that have it, they don't mess with it. It's not nourished. It's not prepared for the tug of war. And so when the tug of war starts, which horse is going to win? Well, naturally, the white horse has been nourished and full and ready for the challenge. Amen? Well, just like our spiritual food. If you don't stay in your spiritual food, you're going to get weak and you're not going to be ready when the enemy comes at you or things start happening in your life that you need to act on faith. I'm going to tell you right now, uh, sometimes, you know, we all uh, are guilty sometimes of unbelief in certain areas in our spiritual walk with the Lord. And so we as Christians need to cry out to God every day, God, help my unbelief and help me to have that faith. My brother was preaching on it, Brother Tommy, this morning. He was in the Hebrew uh, preaching on that faith chapter, you know. You get in the Word of God. What does the Word of God tell us in that faith chapter? Just for instance, it talks about some of our uh, forefathers uh, that had faith, praise God, and they continued to go forth for the Lord and did mighty things uh, uh, with the Lord because uh, uh, they stayed with Him, amen. And we as Christians need to stay in the Word. I'm going to tell you, we got to stay in it. we got to have that spiritual bread. Now, let's look a little bit uh, uh, further. I want to go to uh, uh, Luke uh, quattro quattro, Luke 4, 4 uh, in your Bible. And uh, get a hold of this Bible. Look here, all these Bibles. There's 66 six of them. They're not all on this tie. Praise God. I'm really honored to be wearing this tie today. This is my brother's tie, Roy. I always wanted this tie. I'm going to be honest with you. And I never would say, Roy, that's a beautiful tie, boy, I'd like to have that. You know what he would have done? He would have took it off and gave it to me. So I never would tell him. 
And, uh, but it's an honor to wear this tie today. Uh, 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 my brothers, I think it's a beautiful tie. But it's got those Bibles on there. It's 66 uh, in the books. Uh, and we look at them and see. You need to get in every one of them. You need to read every one of them because there's something in every one of them for you. Amen. And my brother's got it up there, uh, uh, Luke 4, 4. And Jesus answered to him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by what? By what? By what? Bread alone. But every what? Every word. Every word of God. Oh, this, this stuff is, is, is food like you, you can't imagine. Amen? Every word of God. Now, I want to tell you, you know, uh, uh, we're looking at this. And we're talking about the bread. We're talking about, uh, you know, eating is used figuratively partaking of the spiritual food. That's what we're looking at here. That's why we're using uh, the, the, uh, Jesus and, and some of the folks is using bread. They're talking about spiritual, figuratively looking at spiritual food. Praise God. So that's what we're looking at here today. Uh, we're looking at that spiritual food that we can go forth with. Amen. And I'll tell you, we got to have it, ain't we, Brother Charles? Got to have it. Uh, how you think Brother Charles did last night if he went to the prison, didn't have this sword with him, didn't have the word with him? Wouldn't work, would it? But I tell you right now, there's power in the word of God. This word is alive. It is alive, I'm telling you. The word of God is alive. And we're going to look at it and uh, see uh, uh, this morning. Now, uh, if you want to follow with me, let's go on over here uh, in the Gospel of John. Uh, John 6. Uh, 30. I want to look at uh, John 6, 30. I love the Gospel of John. And just look and see. You know, uh, Jesus uh, uh, defeated the devil. You know, he was subject unto the devil just like we are. And you know, when the devil left our Lord uh, in the wilderness, he was out there 40 days and the enemy tempted him in his, his, his hour, his, 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 one of his darkest hour. He was fasting for 40 days and some of the rocks looked like loaves of bread that they made in Israel. And, and, and the devil would tell him, make, this, make him rock bread and and, and, you know, our Lord said, you don't tempt the Lord thy God because it is written. He knew there was power in the word of God. It never changes. Amen. Praise God. It never changes. Now, let's look a little bit uh, uh, further here. And uh, uh, John, the gospel of John. Uh, I know it's in my Bible. Read it many times. And uh, John 630, I want to read uh, what the word says. Amen. Uh, The word says, praise God, I know it's in here. Here we go. You know, the people in Moses' day, they demanded a sign. They wanted some things uh, 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 to exercise their faith a little bit. But uh, in verse 30, it says, They said, therefore, unto him, What sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What doest thou? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert. It, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Now, you know, when uh, 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 the, the Israelis was out in the desert and, and God tempted them a little bit, he, touched, he, he tried them a little bit and he said, hey, they're hungry and they're thirsty and they didn't know what to do. And they cried out to God and Moses and they said, Moses, you know, we got to eat. We ain't got no food out here. We in the desert. And they started uh, grumbling a little bit, complaining. And of course, Moses went to the Lord and the Lord uh, uh, told those folks, well, I'm going to feed you. <laughs> and we see where the manna came down from heaven. The manna came down and fed them. Every day they had to go out there and they had to collect that manna uh, for uh, their meals. And they ate that stuff 40, about 40, 40 years, you know. It must have been some good stuff. And think about it. Some of it was in the Ark of the Covenant. You know, it was a testimony uh, uh, to what uh, God did. He fed the people in the wilderness. Now, if he fed all those people, you don't think he can take care of us and our physical needs and our, our uh, monetary system, our money needs and all the needs that we had, if you put your trust totally in him, you know, we as Christians have to humble ourselves down to the Lord. And when we humble ourselves down to the Lord and realize it ain't our works and our money and our things that we're doing uh, uh, going forth, God has blessed us in those areas. Yes, he has. He has given us a, a way that we can provide for our family's needs. Amen. But we need to recognize like that song. We need to, uh, worthy is the lamb to be praised. Amen. He's worthy. Like that song my sister was singing a while ago. He's worthy to be praised because he really takes care of us. I want to tell you, there's been times in my life <clears throat> that I've been in situations where, you know, uh, my job and other things wouldn't help in nothing. I had to call on God, and guess what? And guess who showed up? He showed up because I cried out with an honest heart. I got in God's Word, and I got some of that spiritual bread, and I applied it to what he said, and I received those things in my needs. Amen? 
that I needed, praise God. Because he's a mighty God, and we have to go forward to, uh, in that. Now, I'll tell you, you know, uh, let's look right here in, in the verse 30, as we was looking, <clears throat> that there said unto him, What sign showeth thou thee that we may see and believe thee? What doest thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, that is written. He gave them bread from heaven to heaven from heaven to eat. Now, God gave them actual material bread to eat, didn't he? Well, guess what else God did? And we're going to read about it. God gave us bread from heaven. He gave us bread from heaven. His name is Jesus Christ. He is the bread of life. We're going to see it in God's word, see? God's word is, 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 is powerful, amen? So he gave them bread from heaven to eat. That was a material food. And, you know, God gives the true bread of life uh, not Moses, you know, we're just men, but we're dependent on who? We're dependent on God, ain't we? Amen? Let's go a little bit further and look here. Then Jesus said unto them, Burly, burly, that's truly, truly, I say unto you, Moses gave you not uh, the bread from heaven, but my Father gave you true bread from heaven. Verse 33. For the bread of God in which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Now, oh, man, we we getting into something here, ain't we? The bread of heaven, God gave that bread down. It came down and it gave us life to the world. Now, how's it given life to the world? If we receive Jesus Christ in our heart, praise God, we'll have life, eternity with him. Amen. You know, when this old uh, 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 body dies and goes to the grave, you know, uh, the conscious the spirit man is still alive. Still alive. Amen. <clears throat> I was reading an article. My wife had to go to the doctor one day this week with her eyes and there was a little article about this guy who died and said there is a heaven and this guy was a, a brain neurosurgeon a brain doctor and he had all kind of things uh, about the brain he knew everything when he died he went in a coma for about 30 days or so I believe that's the way it went and during that time he went to heaven and guess who was there and who he's seen and he knows uh, that it's real. The Lord thy God, he's seen God. And they talked to him and showed him many things and they told him, you got to go back. Well, praise God, my brother uh, didn't have to come back. We wanted him to. Uh, that was selfish of us. I was being very selfish. I know Jeanette and Brother Mike, some of us, we wanted him back. But you know, I remember many times he ministered the word up here, don't bring me back. Don't bring me back. When I'm gone, let me alone because I'm with my father and that's where I want to be. And that's where he's at. But this uh, man that died, well, he was in a coma. He, he hadn't died, but he went to heaven and God showed him things and they told him, you got to go back. Well, he came back. And man, he has all this scientific knowledge that he had in science about the brain and all of that stuff and the conscience and all of that stuff. Throw it out the door. Now, it was good for him to help people in their brain and everything, but he realized they is a God. I seen him. I know my conscience was there. I talk. I spoke with him. I know what was going on. Heaven is real. It's a real place. Praise God. But you're not going to get there unless you get this bread we're talking about. And when you get this bread, you got to feed on that bread. Because if you don't, you're going to get run into some spiritual problems. And you're going to get weak. Uh, and when the enemy comes, you're going to fall down because you're not strong in that bread. And you're not nourished spiritually. You must be nourished spiritually in a daily manner. Yesterday's gone. You know, you might have testified to somebody or, or talked to somebody about the Lord and poured out. Well, your cup gets empty, don't it? You got to fill it back up, ain't you? You got to fill it back up, amen, because you don't. <laughs> I bet you that gas uh, tank out there in that car, if it gets kind of empty and getting close to run out, I have to get on to my wife. She'll say, it ain't beep two times yet, Marty. <laughs> it ain't beep two times yet. We're okay. Yeah, okay, uh-huh. <laughs> but when it gets there, praise God, we go get some gas. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> some of you know what I'm talking about, don't you, Joy? <laughs> But, you know, when it gets empty, you got to go fill that tank back up, amen? Because you don't, you're going to wind up on the road walking. That's a bad scene, you know, especially this day and time. Years ago, I didn't mind it too bad, but today I kind of mind it, you know. <laughs> but uh, you fill that tank up. Well, the same thing's happening to you spiritually. 
If your tank gets down and running empty, you better get back in God's Word and eat on that spiritual bread and fill it back up. Uh, amen? You've got to fill it back up because it will get empty. you giving out and, and doing things and in your daily lives and whatever you know, you've got to fill that tank back up. Next morning, I suggest you fill it up. Amen? And I don't know about y'all, but my truck, I like to ride around on it pretty much gas most of all the time. Because I don't know all the beeps. <laughs> now, my wife might. She might know the beep of my truck. <laughs> but we got to keep our tanks filled, amen? we got to have that bread of life because we don't have that bread of life. Boy, we get in some trouble. I, I'll tell you right now. You know, I've been there. I've put out and put out and all of a sudden, you know, I, uh, I'm like Roy. There's been times I've preached. Said, Lord, I need to preach on credit today because I ain't had time to put it in. And God has mercy and grace and he let me do that. But the next time, you better watch out. He might not say, hey, you got to get in here. You got to get in the word. You got to fellowship with me. Amen. You got to get this word in you. Praise God. It's a very important thing. You know, God uh, 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 wants all of us to know that it's so important when you become a Christian. You got to get in the word and you got to fill up with it. Now, uh, let's go a little bit further here and look and see uh, what God's word said. Amen. <clears throat> uh, and it said, uh, uh, the bread came down and giveth life unto the world. That's Jesus we're talking about. And Jesus said unto them, I am, what? I am the bread of life. Uh, in verse 35 of the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 35. I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Now, see, God's telling you right there, you come to the Lord and eat that bread of life and put him in you. You get in the kingdom, praise God. You're not in the kingdom of this world anymore. You're in the kingdom of God's kingdom, amen? And uh, you ain't got to worry about uh, being hungry and thirsty. And if you do your part, uh, God will certainly do his, amen? But now the key to that is you got to do your part. When you become a Christian, you can't just sit there and listen to what the preacher says and, and what you uh, see and you got to get in that word too. My brother Tommy was teaching this morning about, hey, that preacher gets up there and preach, you better get your Bible and you better open your Bible and you better know what they're saying is the word of God. Amen? It's the bread of life, isn't it? Jesus just said it right here. And he said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. Uh, he that uh, believeth on me shall never thirst. Praise God. Now I want to jump down there to uh, number 40 in this same chapter. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up in the last days. Now see that bread of life we're talking about here, who is Jesus, praise God. When you receive him and get him in your heart, praise God, you're going to be with him for eternity. And guess what? You will have everlasting life with the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Beside him, there is no other God. All the other gods of the world have been buried or in the graves or whatever. Jesus was buried, put in a grave. But on that third gra uh, day, praise God, he came out of that grave. And it's documented over 500 of the brethren seen him alive. The disciples eat with him and sit with him. So we know that he's real, praise God. And I'll tell you right now, if you get this bread of life in your heart, it'll change your life. It'll change your life. I'm going to pick on my brother Joel back there. He got saved here recently, praise God, after uh, uh, quite a while. But you know, his daughter told me a Wednesday night, my daddy's changed. My daddy has changed. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, that's supernatural. Only God can change a man or woman from the inside out. Only God can do that. It's supernatural, praise God. The world and the people of the world cannot do that. But God, when you truly get him in your heart, you change from the inside out. Amen. And uh, the people around you and the people in the world start seeing that change. Amen. The old man is dead. My brother Richard sings that song. I love that song. Talked about the old man. He ain't here no more. The new man has arrived. And going forth uh, spiritually with the Lord. Amen. You got to have that bread. You got to have it. Amen. Praise God. Let's look a, a little bit. Now, what does that bread do? It, it fills us up, don't it? It satisfies. It's complete. It's true bread. Uh, that it feeds the soul, don't it? 
You see, there's a lot of folks running around there looking for this bread, and they want to be fed this bread. They're searching, and they're searching in uh, uh, drugs, alcohol, sex, all of these things of the world, trying to get that bread and get that soul fulfilled. And the only way they're going to do that is through the King of kings and the Lord of lords, is get the living bread, the Word of God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? That's how you're going to fulfill and satisfy the soul of man. You see, that's the way God made it. He's a mighty God, and he's in control. He created the heavens and earth, and by the way, he created us, didn't he? He gave us the air that we breathe, amen? It's awesome to think about. But praise God, uh, this food we're talking about, this bread we're talking about, it's satisfied. It feeds the soul. It sustains us for eternal life with him. You see, we on this old earth just short time. Man, it, it goes by like that, you know. I'm going to tell you, I had a, uh, I, I just lost my brother in the Lord, but I know where he's at, praise God. And a, another brother I found out today uh, that I was raised up with, uh, uh, some of us know him, is Harold Alexander. I'm just going to uh, mention, I, I heard that he passed away. And he used to come in and play the guitar and be with us. I was raised up with him as teenagers. We uh, run around together, and they told us, uh, uh, Sister Sue said she heard that terrible thing. You don't never know when God is going to call you. But, you know, I'm excited about my brother Harold because he is a brother. It's another uh, success story. He's in heaven because he had come and praised God. He said, he'd, you know, he started making tapes and everything. He started praising God. And, and uh, uh, he said, he'd, I mean, he'd rather write songs about God and praise God. And he just was consumed with it, you know? And so I praise God, I'm, uh, I know where he's at. But what if it's a brother or sister or, or a loved one or somebody you know that does not know the bread of life that we're talking about? What if it happens that way? It's a different situation. And, and I, I, you know, I hate to say it, it's a different situation when you have to minister the funeral or be in the funeral or whatever when someone is lost, it's not the same, and you can tell it. You can discern those things. It's not the same. But praise God, the victory uh, is, is won for those that has that eternal bread in their spirit. Amen? Praise God. Now let's look a little further and uh, see here. Praise God. Let's go to uh, verse 47 in the same chapter. I want to read there. Verily, verily, uh, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, has everlasting life. If you believe on this bread we're talking about, you've got everlasting life. Praise God. Now, what does verse 48 say? It says, I am the bread of life. Praise God. Uh, that's who he is. That's Jesus Christ, our Lord. He's the bread of life. He's the one we're talking about this morning. And if you want that bread, praise God, you can certainly have it. You on the internet, just cry out to him, praise God. But if you got that bread, you need to feed on it. You need to feed on it. You need to be nourished uh, in the spirit uh, uh, so you'll be ready. Amen. You need to feed on it. Now, verse 63. I want to look also uh, uh, in verse 68. The word of God says, Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou has the words of eternal life. That's the bread we're talking about. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Peter, his disciples said, listen, where can we go, Lord? You've got uh, the words of eternal life. And that's what we're talking about here today in God's Word. He has the Word, praise God, of eternal life. Amen? So we give God the glory. We give Him the praise. Now I want to look at a, a, a couple more things here I want to look at. Now listen, when you get this bread uh, uh, in your heart, you need to know God and Christ. In John 17, 2 and 3, you, you get in there and you study who, find out who who Christ is and who God is because God given us the word, hasn't he? And, and we can get in it and get that bread, praise God. We know that uh, uh, our, our, our Heavenly Father sent that bread down. And our Lord Jesus Christ left deity. He left all of us because, see, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He's always been. But he came down and when he became a, 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 a man God, which is... Uh, God's uh, earthly son, he became uh, the son of the living God upon this earth. He left his deed. He came down, but he was God, Emmanuel. He was God with us, praise God. But he's the bread of life, and he, 
His ministry, you know, it was only for three years. Only for three years. Can you, can you see the power that our Lord left just for three years of ministry? When he went out in that, when he was baptizing, but he was the bread of life sent down, praise God, for us. And we have it here today, praise God, that we can have eternal life with him. He is, uh, and when we partake uh, of that spiritual food of him, praise God, it's ours, amen? But we got to stay in it. We got to read it. We got to study it. We got to get nourished, amen? Look here. Then Simon Peter answered and said to him, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Now, that's pretty serious, isn't it? Now, we need to know uh, God and Christ, and how do you do that? You get in the Word and learn about uh, 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 the Word, amen? And we need to enter the right gate. We did when we received Him in our heart. When we got Him in our heart, we got in the right gate, and we're going forward with Him, amen? Praise God. And uh, we need to sow to the Spirit, amen? We need to sow to the Spirit. We need to ask God to help us uh, uh, to get more spirit because there's a raging war going on in each and every one of us in here this morning. When you become a Christian, a child of the King, guess what? The flesh rises up against the spirit man and there's a battle going on. But if you get into that bread of life we're talking about and fill up with that bread, the victory is yours. Amen? The victory is yours. Praise God. Because he gives it to us. Because he's a powerful uh, God and he'll never forsake us. He'll never leave us. You know, I, I pray that a lot of time. God, you said you'll never forsake me. you never leave me. And I believe that. I believe that. As I stay true to him, he will stay true to me. Praise God. Now, I want to tell you, when you get in the word and you get that bread in you uh, and you believe in your, your faith gets stronger and stronger, you need to obey the gospel. God's told us certain things that we need to do to live a holy life, to live for him. Uh, not as this world out here. We start putting that old uh, world off and that sanctification is an ongoing thing. I'm getting rid of things that God ain't pleased with uh, as I go my spiritual walk with the Lord. And as I get more of the bread in me, I see those things and I get them off. Amen. I want to be pleasing to God. I want that bread, don't you? I want it in a daily matter. And uh, that'll be my prayer today for each and every one of us uh, that we'll get more nourished. Uh, I bet you money, uh, well, I don't bet that's against my religion, uh, uh, Christianity. But I bet, uh, I don't bet, uh, a lot of you going to get some fried chicken this afternoon after we leave here and them green beans. They will be here. That's that old material food and we like it. It tastes good, don't it? But I tell you right now, you get in God and you get with him and get that spiritual food we are, it is good stuff. Just as good as that material stuff. That's how good it gets. Amen? That's how good it is. But you got to remember, when you're enjoying yourself and blessed uh, of that meal that God gives you today, and some folks on the internet may not get that uh, blessing. We pray that God will touch them and help those folks that might be hungry or in those great needs, people of the world. We, we can't imagine but I'm, I'm just saying today, most of us are probably going to get to eat uh, lunch. But uh, uh, just remember when you're eating that material food, that, hey, i got to eat some spiritual food to, either tonight or in the morning or whenever you decide is a time for you to get in with God and get that bread of life, uh, spiritual food in you. Eat as much. Uh, matter of fact, don't worry about a diet when you get in that spiritual bread. Just go all the way with it. Amen. Don't worry about it because it ain't going to hurt you. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Now look at here. John three sixteen. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth him shall not perish, but have everlasting life because of him and the bread that he's given us. Amen. And God said in his word, John 14, 6, uh, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man come to the Father but by me. The only way to get this bread and nourish in this bread is to recognize and humble yourself and realize that you're a sinner and you need to come to the Lord thy God and to receive this bread of life. Amen. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask every head be bowed. And uh, I, I'm going to ask folks here in the congregation to, uh, if you want to be saved while your head's bowed. I'm going to pray a prayer to the internet folks here uh, in just a minute. But uh, before I do, while every head's bowed, uh, if there's someone here that does not know the Lord or you backslidden and you want to get it right, just raise your hand. You'll be included in this prayer I'm fixing to pray. Just raise your hand right where you're sitting. And, uh, and I'll pray this prayer. 
anybody, anywhere. Amen. Praise God. Now I want to pray for you folks on the internet. I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus uh, that you'll receive this bread, that you'll confess your mouth, that you're a sinner, and ask God to forgive you. If you'll do that, and if you'll believe that uh, uh, this word is truth, and, and if you'll believe that uh, uh, Jesus Christ came and dwelled upon this earth, and that he was crucified, and he was uh, put in the grave, and on the third day he rose again, praise God. And if you confess him with your mouth, the Bible says, Thou shalt be saved. And I pray that you'll confess him with your mouth. In the name of Jesus, I pray you will humble yourself right now and admit uh, that you're a sinner and you'll come to the King of kings and the Lord of lords and the bread of life, that eternal life we're talking about, praise God. Now I'm going to pray another prayer, praise God. I'm going to ask in the name of Jesus. I'm going to ask right now, was this message for you in here this morning? I know it was me. I need to get more. Anybody raise your hand. Raise your Yes, 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 yes. We all need more bread, don't we? Let's pray and, and the corporate prayer, and let's agree right now that God will help us to get more bread uh, of life, of Him in our spirit, that we'll sow more to the spiritual. Amen? Let's all agree right now and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all those that lift their hands, God. And I pray for each and every one of us, God, that, Lord, you'll draw us uh, to your word like never before, God. That, Lord, uh, you'll just, uh, uh, Lord, open the gates and pour down uh, upon us your word and blessings, God, that come from the throne, that we can glorify you and tell the other folks, God, uh, uh, what you're doing with us, God. And, Lord, help us most of all, God, to prepare every day. Help us to get a burning in our heart, a fire in our heart, God, uh, to read and study your word and fill up spiritual food uh, within our heart, God. God, that we'll be ready, God, always uh, for your coming, God, in Jesus' name. That we'll be worthy, God. Lord, help the, uh, uh, the bread to come in and nourish our body. And Lord, uh, got folks here, <coughs> Lord, if they're spiritually weak, uh, I pray uh, uh, this morning, God, uh, that they'll, this afternoon, God, that they'll just get that fire to get back in the Word and get the bread of life in them in a mighty way in the name of Jesus and everybody said amen and amen. Now, I'm going to ask them one other question. Powerful. How many in here will commit to get some more bread spiritually of God's Word? Amen. Praise God. We all need it. Every one of us can't get enough of it. Amen. Now, let me ask you another question. One other thing my brother believed in and my sister in this ministry. Anybody here sick in their body and you need a, a touch this morning, I want you to come right down here. We're going to lay hands on you like the Word of God says, and we're going to pray for you. And then when the folks come down and we pray for them, we'll dismiss. Amen. Anybody sick in your body? Anybody? Come on up. We got 